Hello, everyone. It's time for our October online etiquette masterclass. And I just want to thank you for joining us today. Today is really going to be very amazing. This is Finesse International. My name is Chinelo Dilimono. So I'm going to be sharing my screen as we take today's class. Today's class, we're going to be looking at some etiquette rules that we all break without noticing. It's interesting how many times we do things and not notice that what we're doing are actually breaking some of the etiquette rules. And what is etiquette? Etiquette is simply living our lives in such a way that we show respect, regard, and consideration for other people around us. Like it is said, life is not, no man is an island. Nobody lives by himself. Everybody has to in interact with other people. So in our interactions with other people, it's very important, especially as people that deploy the essences of etiquette to recognize that there are other people around. So whatever I do, I've got to consider. And so Finesse International, part of our vision is to help people to improve on their poise, improve on their presence and also be more refined because every one of us, we all have etiquette anyway, but it's to improve on it. My coach always said to me that all we want to do is add a little sheen to your shine. So today we'll be looking at some etiquette rules that we break even without noticing. And I'm gonna do that in just a couple of minutes. All right, so my name is uh, Chinelo Dilimono. I'm the founder of Finesse International. And basically the goal of every course we do, the entire course is, is to inspire and help you always put your best foot forward as a person and also as a professional, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a business person, you're a mother, you're a wife, whatever you are doing, whether you're an entrepreneur, you want to always put your best foot forward. You don't have to be so rich to be classy. You don't have to be so rich to, um, to exhibit etiquette. So this is me, Chinelo Dilimono. So if you're coming in, this is, you're welcome to our masterclass today. So today's lessons, we're going to be learning three major things. The rules associated with dining, communication rules that we break, as well as rules that are linked to our personal behavior. Now, what are the rules that are associated with dining? Number one, now someone will take this for granted and feel, oh, why do I need to hear this? You'd be shocked at how many people don't really remember while eating that they are not meant to talk with a mouth full. Some people while eating unconsciously don't remember this. So it's to bring this to our frontal cortex that whenever you're eating with other people, be conscious of the fact that your mouth has got to be shut. And then you don't talk while you're eating. Once there's food in your mouth, the best thing to do is wait until you swallow and then you can talk. Other times, don't even, some people do this and cover their mouths and talk. But I, think, I still think this is not very cool. It's, it's actually, it doesn't really tell well. It doesn't show or display. You don't display poise and refinement when you're talking and you're covering your mouth and you're, you know, and there's food in your mouth. So it's best to wait, swallow what's in your mouth, and then you can now talk to the person. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. This is very key. Many times people are eating and you find that they put their elbows on the table. And I'll tell you why this is an etiquette rule that mustn't be broken. You may put your elbows on your own dining table because you're sure of the stability of your table, but you may not necessarily know the stability of the table, maybe at a restaurant or in someone else's house, or probably you're at an event and you're not sure of the stability of the table. So it's always best not to put your elbows because if you put your elbows, the table could topple over, it could spill the food on you, it could spill the food on someone else, it could spill the wine on someone else, it could generally destabilize everybody sitting around the table. So that's why this rule, don't put your hands, your elbows on your table is very important. We have a course in finesse where we teach about dining etiquette. And in that course, we try to you know, ex explain, we try to show you in pictures as well as in the video, how to place your hands on the dining table. So I'll go to the next slide. 
taking food off someone else's plate unless it's offered. I caught myself a few times doing this. When you're out dining with people, sometimes you've ordered what you wanted and then the other person orders something different. And then you realize that, I wish I ordered what that person ordered. And then the next thing you want to take your fork or your spoon to take a scoop from that person's place. That's a total no-no in the school of etiquette. You don't take food off another person's place, place, except the person offers it to you. Right. So the next thing we're going to look at is rinsing your mouth noisily while at table. <laughs> I find this very, very interesting because sometimes someone finishes eating, there's stuff between your teeth, and then you pour in some water and you go at the dining. You don't do that. You could actually swell the water in your mouth calmly and the other people around the table shouldn't hear the sound. Reason being eating is, is eating time, dining time should be an enjoyment time. So what someone else is doing that, that puts me off my eating shouldn't be done at the table. And that's one thing that you could do while even rinsing your mouth. If you make a mistake, it could spill out. And it could spill back in your plate or spill into someone else's plate. So it's very important when you're trying to rinse your mouth, swell the water calmly, not noisily, so that another person can enjoy eating their meal. Right. So let's move on. Like I said at the beginning, I'm just going to touch some etiquette rules that we break in a few things. And I'll show us a video and then we'll all talk about it. Now, the next segment is communication rules that we break. Everybody has an opportunity to talk to people at one point or the other in their lives. Every single day, we always have that opportunity. So, but sometimes in communicating with people, we break some of these rules. And I'm going to be looking at six of them here. Inappropriate comments. What is an inappropriate comment? There are certain comments that mustn't be made while communicating with people. And I'll give you an example. Asking someone, maybe you see a lady who has a big tummy. And you're not even too sure whether she's pregnant or not. And you go, oh, it looks like you're three months pregnant. That is a total no-no. It's an inappropriate comment because she might, like um, in Nigeria, we find that lots of women have things you, like fibroid or some women have large stomachs or maybe it's her postnatal tummy and she's already embarrassed by it. And then you make a comment about her stomach that is totally inappropriate in communicating. So there's certain questions you don't ask, there's certain comments we don't, we don't make, except the person lets us know. Then you can carry on with the conversation. Otherwise, it is actually inappropriate to make a comment on, about someone's body, about someone's, or asking someone, how much do you earn? The person is not your friend. Even if it's your friend, it's inappropriate to ask someone how much salary they earn. Those are comments that sometimes we make that put people off and it makes the whole conversation a bit difficult for people. So in communicating, remember that etiquette is considering other people. So in considering other people, I must remember that while communicating with them to avoid inappropriate comments, to avoid saying things that will make another person uncomfortable, to avoid asking questions that will put the person on the spot avoid saying things that would freeze another person and make them totally uncertain about themselves while communicating. So we keep our conversation within the framework of what is being talked about or keep it as platonic as possible. So the next thing is chronic usage of the cell phone. You can't be talking with someone and then we're pressing on our phones. You're out with another person. Maybe you're in, in, in someone's office. I'll give you an example. You go for an interview or you're going to someone's office and you're sitting in the person's office and you're there pressing away at your phone. That is totally inappropriate in communication. Every moment has its own time. Phone has its own time. So if you're in someone's office and you're communicating with the person, try to keep the phone aside. I usually advise people, put your phone. My phone is permanently on silent because it, I, I get phone calls quite a bit. So I keep it permanently on silent so that if I need to call back, I do. Otherwise, I just leave it there. If you get a text and you're in someone's office or you're before someone, especially someone who's maybe superior, you never pick a phone call when you're, talk, when you're with someone who's superior. 
And then I try to let the young people know because a lot of young people do that. They come to the office and they sit down and they're talking with me and the phone rings. And the next thing I hear is, excuse me, ma, please. Uh, can I take this call? That's a total no, no. You don't take a call while you're having a, having a conversation, except it's an emergency. If it's an emergency, then that's fine. We can say, okay, excuse me, please. This is an emergency. And then you take a step out and take the call because you could be, you could be just taking part of that person's time unnecessarily. So rather than eat into someone's time by the chronic usage of your phone, you, take, you, you could take an excuse, step aside and go and make your call and then come back. Right, the next thing I'd like to mention about you know, rules that we break uh, in terms of communication is sarcasm. Sarcasm is simply mocking the other person, saying things that make another person uncomfortable. Remember that with etiquette, it's important that people around us are comfortable and not comfortable at our, our expense, but comfortable so that we are comfortable and they are also comfortable. So sarcasm is a very wrong thing to use while conversing or communicating with people, mocking people about themselves, about where they come from, about what they believe in, about their body size, anything that will make someone feel mocked is a total no-no in etiquette. Being rude when you're talking to someone is also a no-no. It's important that we are very polite. One of the things I've found out, especially on this side of the world in Nigeria, is that many times we're rude to one another. When someone is talking, we just barge in and we say things that are not necessary. It's not a general thing, but you find that a lot of people do that. We're rude to people when we speak. We use terms like the young generation. I find I have to keep correcting them. When an older person talks to them, they say, yeah, ask the person a question. Did you, did you go to the market today? Yeah, certain, those are rude comments. There's certain things we don't say because it makes the other person uncomfortable. So we need to think before speaking. Think before you say something. Think before you make a comment. Think there's a, there's a way to correct someone without having to insult the person. You know, my father taught me while I was growing up. He taught me the principle. There's a principle of, when there is a situation, when there is something you want to talk about, it is possible to divorce the issue from the person. Persons are meant to be taken care of. Persons are meant to be respected, but issues are meant to be dealt with. So you can deal with an issue without insulting. You can deal with an issue without being rude. So it's important to think. Think before speaking. Then the fourth thing is loud talking. Check your volume. <laughs> Check your volume when you're talking to people. There are people who, when they, when they get agitated, their volume increases. And when their volume increases, they put the other person at edge or on edge. The person becomes a bit uncomfortable. They're not too sure, are we quarreling here? So this, these are etiquette principles that when we can apply them, it helps communication with the other person. You know, I don't know if I'm correct, but this is my thinking that because in Nigeria, every time we have to run our generators, we seem to be very loud when we talk. You find our children, when they talk, they shout. So it's become like a norm, but it's important that we learn to check our volume when we're talking. When you're talking, be sure that you're not shouting. When we're talking, we need to be sure that we're not making the other person agitated by what we say or how we're saying it. Now, in communication, it's not just what we say. It's not also just when we say what we say, but we also need to be careful how we're saying. And checking your volume is a principle of checking how you're saying what you're saying. How loud are you talking? Then also don't talk too low because sometimes you find you're talking to someone and the next thing the person goes, excuse me, pardon me, they're struggling to hear what you're saying. We need to be careful. So check your volume, be sure that the person can hear you. But at the same time, be careful. That's why the word balance, the word balance is very important. That when you're speaking, you speak at a balanced tone, at a balanced volume, so that the person finds it easy to connect with you. Number five is interrupting when others are speaking. Never interrupt people when they're speaking. If someone, I've caught myself several times and it's, it's also part of what I'm also working on as a person that when others are speaking, 
we speak one at a time, allow people, allow someone to finish talking. It's been said that when a lot of people, when they're talking, if someone is talking to them, rather than listen, they're thinking of what next to say. And by thinking of what next to say, they make the mistake of interrupting. So that's another communication rule that many times we also break. Then eavesdropping is a sixth one in communication. Eavesdropping and joining in a conversation when you're not invited. It's possible to be in a crowd of people and two people are talking and you can't but hear what they're saying. Now, when you begin to stretch your ears to hear it a little more, that's what's called eavesdropping. But there's sometimes you can't, you can't avoid it. You're sitting within the, the circle. You can hear what they're saying, but that doesn't mean one is invited to join in the conversation. So sometimes these are rules that we break, manners that you know, we, we, we exhibit that are against the principles of etiquette. So I'm gonna move now to the next one, which is the rules linked to your personal behavior. The rules that are linked to our personal behavior. Now, this is very, very important. I'm hoping that at the end of this class, you would have gained something. Now, let's go to this one. Invading personal spaces invading personal spaces. This is a total no-no. Now, if you look at this picture, you'll find that this young lady is standing in the middle and every other person is standing so close to her, almost all around. This is a very uncomfortable position. I don't know if you've been, of course, most of us have, where you're in the market and then somebody is touching you or you're trying to walk through a door. I'd use that as a good example. If you're trying to walk through a door and someone is already standing by the door, one of the things that we should do is stand aside and say, excuse me, may I pass? But you find that some people will try to squeeze through the little space between. That's a total no-no. Body touching is really not, is not very good. It makes the other person uncomfortable. So part of exhibiting etiquette is when you find that the space where you want to pass through is is small or minimal, try to ask the other person, may I pass please? Or excuse me, please. These are things that we can do. All right, so blowing your nose noisily or in the presence of others, or even poking your nose. There are people who are very unconscious and they don't even know when they get to do it. They just subconsciously put their finger in their nose and begin to pick in public or blowing their noses. You might have maybe phlegm or you have kata, that's fine. You take, an, you take an, a handkerchief and move aside. Someone else doesn't need to hear the sound of us blowing our noses. There's also another way we can do it. If you're in a place where you can't step out, you can just take your handkerchief and dab it on your nose and try to squeeze out as much as you can. And probably find a way of, you could actually tuck in your, your handkerchief in your nose without it being noticed. So blowing our noses noisily and in the presence of others is a total no-no because it makes other people uncomfortable. There are people who once they hear that sound, it puts them off. It puts them off completely. So we need to learn how to do that in a decent way, considering that other people are around us. Now, someone may say, oh, what do I need all this information for? You'd be shocked that when you go to public places, you find that people do these things and we wonder why we're uncomfortable. There are little etiquette um, principles that when applied makes life easy for other people, right? The next one is personal hygiene. Combing our hair in public, you find someone is sitting in a public place and then maybe your wig is scattered and then you just bring out your brush and you start brushing publicly. That's a no-no or you spit by the side. This is all you find men who just stand by the street and just zip down and begin to, to um, ease themselves. That's a total no-no. These are private things, personal hygiene things, scratching your private areas, standing in the queue and get body touching, like I said earlier. All these are not to be. Or I don't know if you've been in a cab, sitting with other people, and someone just puts their hand on the seat just behind you and definitely the, 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 the stench coming from them is affecting, I mean, see in that picture, this is a young man standing by a lady, I think they're in a train or in a bus, and under his shirt is completely 
soaked with sweat. And the lady is tucked in there. I don't know if he used the roll on, but she's uncomfortable. And this is it's completely unfair. So we need to be careful about things like that. That's why we need to take care of our personal hygiene because it's not just about us. Life is not about just about us. It also includes other people. It's very key, very important. And we need to teach our children these things as well. You don't spit on the floor. You don't spit around. We don't do things like that because when we do it, we make other people. There are people who at the slightest sense of anything that is bad hygiene, they're totally put off. Maybe they're eating with you. They won't be able to eat anymore or something happens and they feel like puking because someone has done something or maybe someone has walked by with a bad body odor. So we need to take care of these things and be conscious of them. The whole essence of these master classes is to bring to our consciousness because it's not that we don't know these things, but to bring to our consciousness the importance of taking care of these areas of our lives. All right, so dropping trash on the floor. When I was preparing this slide, I just remembered myself and my son. Some years ago, I had been teaching them don't throw things out of the window. Um, the pure water sachets, bottles, papers, or whatever. And I was driving on another day unconsciously because we've done it over time. I just wound down my glass and was about to fling. I don't know what it was. I was about to fling out almost like in this picture. And my son goes, mom, I thought you said we shouldn't fling things out of the window. Reason, the environment is messed up. We find that our drainages are clogged. There, there should be trash cans everywhere and we should learn to use them. So I say to people, if you have trash as a lady, put your trash in your handbag. When you get home, you can put it in the dustbin. If there's no trash can around, if you have an empty bottle, hold it in your hand, keep it with you until you get home. Don't mess up the environment for other people because the environment belongs to us all. And already we have environmental issues globally. There are environmental issues that are affecting everyone. There's global warming. There's a lot of, um, what they call it, air pollution that's been going on. We all need to just help one another to keep the world a better place for each other. All right. Takes us to the next point, which is laughing at others in front of them or laughing behind them. Some people find themselves in this and they take a lot of delight in it. But this is really a total no-no. It's not nice to laugh at people. We only laugh with people, but never laugh at people. There are people who don't have the capacity to, to endure such jesting. So when things happen, you can laugh at yourself. You can laugh with people, but I think it is very unnecessary and uncultured and wrong to laugh at somebody else. Doesn't matter what they do, except they are laughing and you find that they are laughing alone and you just want to help them to feel comfortable because there are some people who know how to laugh at themselves and they want you to laugh along, but not to make them feel foolish or make them feel stupid or make them feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So laughing at other people in front of them is not nice and laughing or jesting at people behind them because if they get to hear it, it breaks the heart, it hurts them. Someone says, oh, it doesn't really matter, but it does matter because people matter. And part of etiquette is to understand that people are important, people matter, people need to be cared for, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna take us now to um, the next slide. This one, our mothers, <laughs> our mothers told us while we're growing up, pointing at people. You never point at people, we never stare at people, even when you want to talk to someone, we don't point and say, hey, you. Rather, what we say is, excuse me, you open your palm. This is a polite way to do it. You open your palm and say, excuse me, can I talk to you for a moment? Excuse me, can I have your attention? We don't go, hey, you. Or point at them. Yes, I'm talking to you. That's pretty rude. So you use your, your palms, you open up your palms like I'm doing right now in the video. You open your palms and say, hello, May I, can I, can I have your attention? Hello, please, could you help me with this? That is a better way to do it. And no staring at people. When we stare at people, it keeps them uncomfortable with us. All right. So 
this is actually what I have for us today in the masterclass. Um, etiquette is simply showing consideration and thoughtfulness toward others in a way we speak, in the way we act, in the way we behave, and in the way we conduct ourselves with other people. This is very, very important. We need to, we need to uh, consider other people every time we come out, every time we show up. When we show up, we must consider how other people feel. Thanks. Now for, because of time, um, I'm sure you noticed a few things there, but I'd like to just, you know, a little disclaimer on the banana part, <laughs> because that's not Nigerian. And, you know, we have Nigerian etiquette, you have the um, American etiquette, you have British etiquette, you have Chinese etiquette, you have Japanese etiquette. Now in Nigeria, we can eat our bananas, but you don't have to take the banana and put it in your mouth. You can actually, if your hands are clean, you can take, cut a piece and put it in your mouth. But using your fork and knife may not necessarily very go very well with the Nigerian at, um, environment. We have our own etiquette, like I said earlier. All right, but the other part, which is very important that we need to note is that the man and the woman were walking and the woman was in front. Now, the reason why it's important that the man is in front is just in case, because the lady is wearing heels. If she stumbles, the man is there to help her to come down, help, help to protect her from falling. So that's why it's important that when a man and a woman are walking, the man walks a little in front and the woman is walking somewhere behind, not too far, not too far behind, but in such a way that just in case there's a little accident, there can be help close by. Also notice that I'm sure you noticed when the lady was going into the car, her dress was short. So it wasn't very nice for her to go into the car with her legs, you know, both apart. So when you want to go into the car, you sit down first, lift both legs at the knee and then slide yourself gently into the car. Same thing when you're coming out. All right. So this actually is almost like the end of our class today. But my question is, are we ready to change our world? The reason why we started Finesse International finishing school is because we find that it's very important that people learn how to apply principles in their interactions with other people. People are important. Everyone is special. Everyone needs to be treated nicely, but sometimes we find that many people don't know the how. So that's why Finesse International is there. So you can actually follow us on any social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, one Instagram, and um, we have a website. Our website is www.finesseinternational.co.uk. We have a lot of courses. You can go there and check what we have. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for spending these few minutes with us in this masterclass. You can always send, the phone number is 0701028799. Nine zero three. It is also in the emails that we sent. You can check the email. Our phone numbers are there. You can reach us at any point in time and we'll be glad to meet and talk with you. We'll be glad to set up customized courses for you. We'll be glad to show you our courses on our online academy. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>